I know almost everybody here, but the few people I don't know, my name is Dick Walzer, and um, I want to welcome you all. I'm the uh, present chairman of the Magic Lantern Society. We never know whether that's an honor or an obligation. It's the old chairman never died. They just temporarily came up their position, right? Only to reclaim it. Mostly what we wanted to do is to try to get everybody together. I think it's nice that all of you have come here to, to do it. I'm really looking forward to this show. So I think as all showmen would say, let, let the show begin. And it's a very exciting program. Hopefully everybody will enjoy it a lot. Okay, here we go. If I lose the script, it means I'm having a good time. <laughs> Welcome to the Magic Lantern Show. You, you may find some curious and interesting things happen this evening. This is actually a print from 1800. It was called Cubit's Magic Lantern. I figured I could name it after myself. I really realized the showman just decided how to use what artifacts to do his or her magic. So if we can have the lights. I have to tell you, these shows go better if you participate. <laughs> okay. These are called chromatropes. And the reason they're called chromatropes is they do an incredible thing. See, you thought that was incredible. Now wait, wait. None of you who've ever seen a Magic Lantern show has seen this. You're allowed to say ooh with this one. It's a pretty good one. Pretty nice, huh? That's amazing. I haven't seen that before. Uh, before we had movies uh, in the 19th and 18th century, people were putting images on walls. It was really the first notion, Joe, that people could see. And it goes all the way back to ancient China. Leonardo da Vinci was playing with ideas of a bullseye lantern in the 1500s. Projecting images on walls is an ancient art. I like that. It's an ancient art. These were street entertainers when people had a little money. So not only did you have your lantern, they often had music, even though the music was often not very good. Once upon a time, long, long ago, there was a chick named Little Red Riding Hood, a flower power kid from the Bronx who delivered goodies, and an unnamed, big tooth, really bad wolf used to be a photographer and uh, I was very interested in seeing photographs from the 1870s and 1880s and then one day I went to a Magic Lantern show and it's just uh, my eyes lit up uh, my eyes rolled over and it was like seeing chocolate chip cookies I just uh, fell in love with these things they hit their golden uh, age from about period of 1860 to 1900 and then they couldn't compete with the movies when movies emerged that was kind of the death knell of the Magic Lantern but if, that's if you see it as a separation. If you see actually all this as a series of art forms that evolved, then in fact the movies are the latest version of the Magic Lantern. Shadow toys from about 1820, and they just get better and better. <laughs> I'm feeling good. It's So this one's a very colorful lantern, which is called the Pettibone Peacock. It was actually used by the Masons a lot. She's a little slow, <laughs> but wait a second, if you clap, she can go faster. Oh, ooh.
It was a very inexact science, but it's exactly. in a magic way. The form of any collecting, I know you know a lot about collecting, is the hunt. Finding something in a field and then uh, handling about it, trying to set a price and trying to buy it. I've got a lot of stuff to uh, steal some ideas on um, how to get shows, which is a great Good night, mouse. Good night, moon. Good night, everyone.